Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in this video we will see the classification and different types of fatty acids and examples for each class along with their structural features of medium chain fatty acids, very long chain fatty acids and monounsaturated fatty acids along with polyunsaturated fatty acids. So to talk about fatty acids, as I said, there are different types of fatty acids based on the chain length, based on the even numbers, based on the odd numbers, okay, and based on the saturation, right. So first we'll talk about the based on the chain length, like a number of carbons. So fatty acids which are having four to six carbon atoms, they comes under category small chain fatty acids like butyric acid, propionic acid, and the uh, fatty acids which are having 8 to 14 carbons they will come under medium chain fatty acid caproic acid lactic acid okay and those with 16 to 18 carbons are long chain fatty acids like oleic acid and palmitic acid and there are some fatty acids which are having more than 20 carbons in the chain so they comes under very long chain fatty acid so why this classification is significant why because as i told you so different subcellular organelles involved in one one type of fatty acid uh, degradation like suppose if you see small chain fatty acids easy for degradation medium chain fatty acids in case of like uh, mother's milk okay so these medium chain fatty acids play major role to provide energy to the baby okay and long chain fatty acids they are uh, prominent in synthesis so fatty acid synthesis like uh, palmitic acid which will be synthesized in the body and like very long chain fatty acids they do require separate set of subcellular organelles such as peroxisomes so in with the help of Peroxisomes only these very long chain fatty acids can be metabolized. So that's the reason why we are again going back to the basics of the classification of fatty acids based on the chain length. So one by one we will see small chain fatty acid as I said butyric acid, caproic acid 6 carbon, propionic acid 4 carbon. I mean that also is there and medium chain fatty acids like capric acid 10 carbon, lauric acid 12 carbon, myristic acid 14 carbon. So they are all present in human milk and they are serving as an important source of energy for the newborn babies. And normal skin has a thin layer of sebum secretion with uh, medium chain triglyceride containing lauric acid which prevents bacterial entry into the body. So in this tabular column, we'll see the difference between the short and medium chain fatty acids with the long chain fatty acids. So we can give examples. So butyric acid, 4 carbons, lauric acid, 12 carbon. I mean like butyric acid is present in butter and lauric acid is present in coconut oil which is 12 carbon. When you see the long chain fatty acid, palmitic acid is a 16 carbon, stearic acid 18, which are present in uh, vegetable oils and animal fats. So digestion in stomach, short and medium chain fatty acids are easily hydrolyzed, but in case of long chain fatty acids, it's difficult to hydrolyze them in the stomach. Pancreatic lipase need not to work on this short and medium chain fatty acid, and but um, long chain fatty acids they do require the aid of pancreatic lipase for degradation. And bile salts, they may not necessary for uh, breakdown of medium chain fatty acid, already, already they are short. Okay, but in case of long chain fatty acid, emulsification is must because they are lengthy, I mean they are very lengthy, they are in uh, high in proportion. So they are absolutely, there is a requirement of bile salts for emulsification. Inside intestinal cells, TH is hydrolyzed to fatty acids. So TH is a complex substance and simple thing is monoacylglycerol and fatty acids. So they are supposed to be hydrolyzed and uh, converted to fatty acid. So, in case of long chain fatty acid, once the monoacyl glycerol enter inside, free fatty acids, again they will be reacidified to TAG. Medium and short chain fatty acids, they can easily absorb in the intestine, but in case of long chain fatty acids, they require lymphatic system and they will be, with the help of lipoproteins, they enter into lymphatics and then to thoracic duct. So that's why when a lipid rich meal, if you have, I mean after that, your uh, lymph is like milky in color. So they are absorbed as free fatty acids and in circulation they will be carried by albumin and uh, long chain fatty acids they will be carried by lipoproteins such as chylomicrons. Immediate fate is like they will be oxidized peripheral cells because free fatty acid is available when they degrade the uh, short and medium chain fatty acids and they are meant for quick energy formation and they will be deposited in, uh, in case of long chain fatty acids they will be stored in adipose tissue 
and carnitine is not required for oxidation very long chain and long chain fatty acids required for oxidation that means transportation of these fatty acids from cytoplasm to mitochondria only long chain fatty acids so very long chain fatty acids require carnitine shuttle otherwise short chain and medium chain fatty acid doesn't require uh, carnitine for the transportation to mitochondria and clinical application short chain and medium chain fatty acid doesn't have any effect on atherosclerosis but in case of long chain fatty acids they have chance of because they will be depositing so if they will be carrying by lipoproteins if there is any defect in the deposition and imbalance in transportation of uh, you know, these long chain fatty acids by lipoproteins if there is any defect so they cause hypocholesterolemia at the same time atherosclerosis so coming to very long chain fatty acids fatty acids as we discussed which are having 20 or more carbon atoms are called very long chain fatty acids and uh, example you can say icosapentaenoic acid that means they are having five double bonds so that means they are very long chain fatty acids are always unsaturated okay and one more thing is docosahexanoic acid that means it is having six double bonds in the structure that means it's of total of 22 carbons are good examples of i mean like eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexanoic acid these are the two very long chain fatty acid okay and docosahexanoic acid synthesized in liver from linoleic acid linoleic acid is a 18 carbon compound it's a omega 3 fatty acid DHA is synthesized in liver from linolenic acid and linolenic acid is 18 carbon fatty acid which is omega 3 type and there are three double bonds are there and docosahexanoic acid is available in large quantities in fish oils so that's why fish oils are good okay and docosahexanoic acid is especially required for the development of brain and retina low levels of docosahexanoic acid in blood is seen in patients with retinitis pigmentosa so other key features of very long chain fatty acids in human beings docosahexanoic acid accumulates in brain before birth and for up to 12 weeks afterwards outer segments of retinal rods contain high concentration of docosahexanoic acid which gives high fluidity to the membranes this is required for the lateral and rotational movement of rhodopsin within the membrane during photo activation okay and very long chain fatty acids or partly oxidized in peroxisomes to smaller fatty acids which then leave peroxisomes to enter into mitochondria so that means what you understood for to metabolize completely the very long chain fatty acid first they have to be broken down in peroxisomes a mechanism is available in peroxisome only so if there is any defect in the peroxisomes these very long chain fatty acids are going to be start accumulating and hence further they cannot be metabolized so very long chain fatty acids first they metabolize it in uh, peroxisomes later in mitochondria so the peroxisomal oxidation differs from beta oxidation in that it electrons from fadh2 are directly donated to oxygen to form hydrogen peroxide so this is one other significance so in beta oxidation there is no generation of hydrogen peroxide in case of in mitochondria but in peroxisomal oxidation they do production of hydrogen peroxide because here electrons are not transporting to from fadh2 i mean so from fadh2 electrons are directly transporting to hydrogen peroxide so this step doesn't produces ATP. So peroxisomal beta oxidation doesn't produces ATP. As I mentioned, if there is a deficient oxidation of very long chain fatty acids by peroxisomal enzymes, so it leads to adrenolicodystrophy where very long chain fatty acids are accumulated and myelin sheets are destroyed. So this condition can seen by X-linked, I mean like what to say, adrenolicodystrophy is an X-linked condition, and the child may not survive more than a, I mean 10 years of life. So probably the child die within the first decade of life. So next is monounsaturated fatty acid that means mono that means single so saturation I told you saturation I mean unsaturation is presence or absence of double bonds so monounsaturation means single double bond is there so palmitic acid and oleic acids are present in human body so also in vegetable oils so uracic acid uh, is a constituent of mustard oil or rapeseed oil nervonic acid is present in substantial quantities in brain the oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids proceeds as in case of saturated fatty acids till the double bond is reached. So thus palmitic acid undergoes three cycles of beta oxidation to yield D3 cis enoyl CoA with 10 carbon atoms. Here the double bond is cis type. The dehydrogenase cannot act on that bond. Therefore an isomerous change that is C D3 double bond to D2 trans double bond. The double bond between third and fourth carbon atoms is shifted between second and third carbon atoms. It will then undergo second, third, and fourth step reactions of beta oxidation. So this cycle is FAD dependent dehydrogenation is not needed. So in this cycle, FAD dependent dehydrogenation is not needed. So thus the case of unsaturated fatty acids, the energy is less by 1.5 ATP molecules per double bond. But in case of saturated fatty acids, the extra 
generation of 1.5 ATP molecules as there is no double bond. Coming to polyunsaturated fatty acids, the important polyunsaturated fatty acids are linoleic acid, linolenic acid, arachidonic acid. You see linoleic, linolenic both are 18 carbon compounds and they both differ in the presence or absence of double bonds like linoleic acid and linoleic both are unsaturated fatty acids only. They differ in the presence of number of double bonds. Linoleic acid is having two double bonds, linolenic is having three double bonds. Okay, arachidonic acid is a 20 carbon compound which is having four double bonds. So, they are present in significant quantities in vegetable oils such as sunflower oil, cottonseed oil, okay, and groundnut oil. So, they are used for esterifying of cholesterol whereby later on can mix. So, esterification of cholesterol is nothing but addition of fatty acid that means this polyunsaturated fatty acid to cholesterol. That means addition of fatty acid to cholesterol is forming cholesterol ester. So, this is called cholesterol esterification. So, PUFA in general anti etherogenic that means it will not allow cholesterol to be etherogenic. When there is addition of PUFA to cholesterol, it will not be a etherogenic rather than PUFA is a anti etherogenic They are good. Okay, these lipids are good for health. So, fish oils contains polyunsaturated fatty acids with 5 or 6 double bonds. They are important for development of human brain. Now, what is the significance of PUFA? PUFA, uh, we can see in vegetable oils as I mentioned, they are nutritionally essential and are called essential fatty acids. Prostaglandins, thromboxanes, leukotrienes are produced from arachidonic acid. So, arachidonic acid is one of the essential fatty acid and PUFA, it comes under category. So, that means from arachidonic acid, you are synthesizing so many complex lipids like prostaglandins, thromboxanes, leukotrienes. PUFA is an integral part of mitochondrial membrane and also the deficiency of PUFA, biological oxidation is reduced because mitochondrial membrane is again a typical uh, complex type of uh, membrane system which is highly requirement of polyunsaturated fatty acid. If there is a deficiency of polyunsaturated fatty acid, the membrane is also weak and you know the importance of membrane of mitochondria it is for transportation also and main thing electron transport chain will be taking place in the inner and outer mitochondrial membrane space of uh, mitochondria. So, that will not be takes place efficiently. So, they are components of membranes, arachidonic acid is 10 to 15 percent of fatty acids of the membrane. So, that is the thing, every cell if you take, they are all made up of cell membranes and all the cell membranes are made up of mostly 10 to 15 percent by arachidonic acid. So, as double bonds are in cis configuration, the PUFA molecules cannot be closely packed. So, polyunsaturated fatty acids will increase the fluidity of the membrane. Okay, so these PUFA main reason for the fluidity of the membrane. If Concentration of PUFA is high, the fluidity is also more. If the reduction in the PUFA, the fluidity also will reduce. As PUFA are easily liable to undergo peroxidation, the membrane contains PUFA are more prone for damage by free radicals. So, as they are giving good shape to the membranes, PUFA and strengthening the membrane, if there is any attack of free radical, they are the first targets for the free radicals to getting to get damaged. Okay, and this is chain reaction. If one polyunsaturated fatty acid is affected by free radical, it is like chain reaction. The other polyunsaturated fatty acid present in the membrane also get effect. The production of docosahexanoic acid from alpha linoleic acid is limited, and docosahexanoic acid is present in high concentrations in fish oils. DHA is present in high concentrations in retina, cerebral cortex, and sperms. And now coming to the clinical futures of PUFA and essential fatty acids. Persons with normal diet will not have any deficiency, but those who are parenteral nutrition for long periods will have deficiency. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are used for esterification and excretion of cholesterol. Okay, and PUFA will reduce serum cholesterol level by esterifying the cholesterol. Deficiency of essential fatty acid causes acanthocytosis, hyperkeratosis, that means hardening of the skin, uh, acrodermatitis, and hypercholesterolemia. Essential fatty acid deficiency is connected with acrodermatitis, enteropathica. Uh, Hepatorenal syndrome and CNS manifestations. Elevated PUFA levels seen in Zellweger syndrome and DHA levels in blood are low in patients with retinitis pigmentosa. And uh, trans fatty acids compete with essential fatty acids with and may increase the essential fatty acid deficiency and decrease fluidity of the membrane. Trans fatty acid decrease HDL cholesterol levels and may cause atherosclerosis. So, essential fatty acids. So, what are essential fatty acids? So, I said fatty acids which are not able to synthesize in the body, they are known as essential fatty acids. So, we have seen three out there, linolenic, linolenic, arachidonic acid, anyhow it is coming from. So, it is not that essential. So, linolenic acid and linolenic both are the essential fatty acids, okay, because they cannot able to synthesize. If you are having a linolenic acid, you can easily get the arachidonic acid. So, out of three, two are essential and arachidonic acid, you can easily synthesize from the uh, linolenic acid. Linolenic acid is uh, able to produce arachidonic acid, not linolenic acid.
so gamma linolenic acid it is essential fatty acid of omega 6 family in the body uh, gamma linolenic acid is uh, linolenic acid is produced from linolenic acid gamma linolenic acid is dis desaturated to arachidonic acid uh, gla may prevent cardiovascular disease by preventing atherosclerosis dietary source of gla are uh, plant seed oils gla is also found in human milk so what is the clinical significance of omega 3 and omega 6 polyunsaturated fatty acids so there are three major types of omega 3 fatty acids in food these are ala alpha linolenic acid icosa pentaenoic acid epa and docosa hexanoic acid so we already know the importance of docosa hexanoic acid because they are very much important for making of reins and neurons and myelin sheets okay they are much connected with the central nervous system so the body converts and also for the pigmentation uh, retina okay the body converts ala to i mean uh, alpha linolenic acid to Ecosa pentaenoic acid and then to decosa hexanoic acid. So most of the ala consumed in the diet comes from fruits and nuts. The highest concentration of EPA and DHA are found in cold water fishes such as salmon, tuna and herring. So that's why salmon and tuna are very rich of decosa hexanoic acid. The most important polyunsaturated fatty acids biological are EPA and DHA. Most of the omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids consumed in the diet are from vegetable oils such as soybean oil and corn oil. Linolenic acid is converted to arachidonic acid. When gamma linolenic acid is available in food, GL is converted to arachidonic acid. So that's why arachidonic acid is not important. Why? Because arachidonic acid can be made from the linolenic acid. So omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids are inappropriated into cell membranes. These membranes lipid serves as precursor for synthesis of important signaling molecules involved in cell growth as well as in inflammation. The most important omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid is arachidonic acid. On stimulation of the cell, arachidonic acid is released from cell membranes through the action of phospholipase A2. Okay, the release arachidonate then serves as precursor for synthesis of prostaglandins, thromboxanes and leukotrienes which can come and fight with the inflammation. These eicosanoids will cause platelet and nucleoside activation as well in signaling of pain, induction of uh, bronchoconstriction and regulation of gastric secretions. These activities further targeted for the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, non-steroidal NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and COX-2 inhibitors, okay, they are like pain releasing drugs, okay, COX-2 inhibitors and leukotriene antagonists because when you prostaglandin is uh, liberated in circulation, they cause pain. So, to block the production of prostaglandins, so this COX-2 inhibitors acts as a drugs, okay. And dietary omega-3 fatty acids, PUFA competes with pharmacological activities of omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids because they displace arachidonic acid from cell membranes. Increasing dietary consumption of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids will reduce the activity of leukocytes and platelets. So that is the importance of polyunsaturated fatty acids in terms of clinical point of view. So that's all about key features of medium chain fatty acids, long chain fatty acids, very long chain fatty acids, PUFA and essential fatty acids. Thanks for watching. Thank you.